Okay, back on the show and joined now by, believe it or not, it's time for college basketball. Xavier's head man is here, Chris Mack. Coach, can you believe tomorrow's the day? Well, I can. Probably the rest of the uh, country can't, but, uh, you know, as a college basketball coach, you always look forward to this day. And, of course, you made the NCAA tournament, lost in the first round in Dayton last year. Does that, more than anything, provide the motivation as you begin a new season? Look back on that game, what you failed to accomplish, how much farther you want to go. Well, I thought we had a great year, but it, it's awfully disappointing when you end the way we did. You know, we, uh, we weren't competitive in the game against NC State. Um, you know, however, we have a new team, you know, six of those guys uh, didn't have a Xavier uniform on at the time. So uh, for the upperclassmen, uh, I'm sure it, um, it resonates, you know, it sticks in their crawl. And, um, but, you know, we're going to start this season off uh, with, you know, a very, very new team, an exciting one, but one that wasn't necessarily in that locker room a year ago. You know, and you, you mentioned the six new kids and the recruiting class is tremendous. It's led by Trayvon Bluett. Can you talk about this class and... You know, you have to temper the enthusiasm from everybody a little bit because the expectations would just skyrocket. And, and these guys are true freshmen. We have to be fair. Well, freshmen nowadays, uh, when they enter college basketball, they want to play. Yep. Um, you know, and then you look at the makeup of our roster, and 50% of our team or thereabout uh, are freshmen. So, you know, whether it's, um, you know, a uh, starting role, whether it's, you know, coming off the bench, you know, we're going to have guys that are going to play major minutes this year as freshmen. And uh, that's a scary thing at times, but I think exciting as well. And, you know, our veterans, guys like Matt Stainbrook and, and Dee Davis, uh, Remy Abel, who's played, um, you know, college basketball for a couple of years, and then James Farr and uh, some of our younger uh, veterans, you know, they have to sort of lead the way and lead by example and be ready to get the job done as well. Tell us about Jalen Reynolds. I look at him, I see an NBA body, an NBA athlete. But it, as you know, it, it takes so much more than that. Give us a little something on Jalen year one to year two now. Well, he had a lot of peaks and valleys a year ago. Yeah. You know, I think uh, a lot of people remember games like St. John's when he had a double-double and, you know, arguably was the best player on the floor. But he also had games where he was in foul trouble. Um, you know, he didn't rebound consistent. He didn't finish consistently enough and, you know, seemed lost at times on the defensive end. Uh, but I think Jalen has made huge steps. You know, we really need him. Uh, to play like a man this year, to really take that, that step that so many guys take from their freshman to sophomore year. Uh, he has the potential to be one of the best bigs in our conference, and uh, we need him to play like that. You know, you have a good big as well in, in Matt Stainbrook, and so few college teams have that true five, back to the basket, throw it into him, rebound, block shot, right. do the whole, he's the whole package, and he's uh, a preseason almost everything for the Big East Conference. Tell us what you're expecting out of Matty this season. Leadership, yeah. uh, first and foremost, but uh, you know, Matt's a veteran, and I think every guy on our team feels really comfortable with throwing him the ball. Uh, he's very, very unselfish. You know, Mike, to me, he's the best passing big man in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very hard to double, um, you know, because he sees the floor really well. He understands timing, and that doesn't always happen with a, with a true back-to-the-basket player. So, uh, you know, he's in really, really good shape. End of the year, he was banged up a little bit and had to sit out for a while with his knee, but uh, he's 100% healthy, and he's anxious to go. And then, of course, you have to replace the productivity that you lost in Samaje Kristen leaving for the NBA. Um, is it, you know, a, a team effort in trying to do that, or can it be on one guy? No, I mean, I would think with, with, with what we lost with Samaje, we lost a guy that had the ability to get in the lane. You know, he was so quick with the basketball. He was excellent in transition. And I think we're going to get bits and pieces of that from various guys. You know, a player like Remy Abel, um, is really good in transition. You know, as fast as Samaje was, Remy's every bit as fast. Uh, and I think, you know, again, whether it's the freshman, whether it's Brandon Rand Randolph taking a step up, I think other guys are going to have to fill, uh, you know, parts of the things that Samaje brought to our team. Jay Wright at Villanova. You've got Georgetown. Butler won't be down forever. It's a good conference. Give us a little primer on the conference for this season. You know, it's a very good conference. Villanova certainly is going to lead the way, at least in preseason polls. You know, they arguably, um, you know, they've had everybody back. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they were dynamite a year ago. And again, so much is pinned on how you do at the end of the year in conference tournaments and NCAA tournaments. And, and they didn't play very well down the stretch, you know, losing, uh, you know, in the conference tournament early and then uh, a quick exit in the second round of the NCAA tournament. But they'll be really good. Georgetown's got on paper a top 10 recruiting class in the country as the Seton Hall. So, uh, and then St. John's is, is as talented as any team in the conference. So it's going to be uh, a monster league once again. I think, uh, you know, uh, it's really going to be up for grabs. Again, Villanova, you got to give them a lot of credit, but that's why you play the games. And figure you got another, what, 65, 70% shooting night in you against UC this year on campus? Well, <laughs> that's only one, one time a year that we play those guys, and it's a great uh, game for our city. Uh, it's a great game for both programs, but, um, you know, who, who knows how we'll shoot it this year. Mick usually has an incredible team defensively, so 
um, you know, we'll worry about that game in February. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the Brazil trip. Obviously, that was a, a great team bonding experience. But before you left the country, the softball outing, which yeah. took place on campus, you had a couple of nice hits, which you told us you would have a couple of nice hits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about that whole experience. We'll start with the softball game, but tell us about the whole summer. That was great. You know, uh, again, when you're trying to combine six freshmen with, with uh, seven veterans and really trying to mesh into one unit, uh, we wanted to do things like that. You know, the softball game was, was certainly all in fun, but the guys had a great time with it. We held, held a draft, and uh, it wasn't very uh, aesthetic softball, to say the least. Some guys had never played before. There were a couple of guys, after they hit the ball, we have to tell them which base to run to. But once we got through all <laughs> like that, Italy. it was a great time. And then that led right into Brazil, which, you know, the competition was different. The international yeah. game is a short and shot clock, uh, much more physical on the perimeter. But... Again, I don't know if you necessarily do those types of things just for the basketball games per se, but the whole experience, whether it was culturally, uh, coming together as a team, I thought it was top notch. And you know, Xavier does things right and allow us mm -hmm. to go to a place like Rio de, de, uh, de Janeiro during uh, you know, the month of August was, was an incredible experience for our guys. Tell you what, your voice sounds good tonight. I'm wondering if tomorrow at around the same time it'll sound as good after that first practice. <laughs> I sure hope so. I sure hope so. All right, Coach Chris Mack from Xavier, thanks so much. Best of luck this season. Thanks, Mike.